this lifestyle, along with all the judgment. My not being a stay-at-home mom, by the way, they're both entrepreneurs, very successful, happily married. One's a financial planner, the other's a marriage and family therapist, so obviously I didn't do so bad after all. But having been a teacher that was constantly fighting the system, I decided to go to a place that welcomed what I did. I was always the maverick, an entrepreneur, another sign of an entrepreneur. So, uh, 70s came, again that itch, that hunger for new and different, we sort of, we didn't sort of, we dropped out of our world in Miami and moved to a sleepy little town called Athens, Georgia. That's where we opened up our very first cookie store, ended up within a year and a half literally having uh, 13 franchise stores up and down the southeast coast. This was just when Wally Amos do you know who that is? Famous, famous, famous. Famous, famous. Okay, just checking because, you know, just making sure <laughs> that history hadn't, uh, hadn't gotten in the way of our understanding each other here. So he was on the West Coast, we were on the East Coast, and that's where, where it all began. Well, in that interim between our move and everything else, when I first met technology face-to-face -face, was when a very good friend of mine, Nancy Smith was her name, and she was the director of operations at a manufacturing plant in Athens, Georgia, called Westinghouse. And I had met her because I had, I was living in this fabulous uh, Victorian home. I think it had 21 coal-burning fireplaces or whatever, but it was a great place to have a party. And I was living in Georgia. I never forgot that I was living in Georgia. And at that time, getting the ERA passed, was my mission in life. So I would have for women only parties. And what I did at those parties is I invited all the people from the university, all the people from the community, all the people that, that we knew and loved in, in this small little sleepy town. And of course the men were very threatened, like what do you do at these parties? I mean, what do you really do at these parties? Oh, we talk about recipes and our children and our husbands. That's not what we talk about, getting the ERA passed and getting some political consciousness going. Nancy was at this, this event, and she came to me and she says, I know you're going to be doing this business, but, which was a cookie store at that time, different name, our partners were our best friends, need I say more, okay, and we're doing something really different at Westinghouse, and I need you to do this project for me. Okay, what's the project? She knew I could write, she knew that she knew about me. She also knew that technology was a foreign language to me, and therefore I was perfect for this job. They were bringing computers to the manufacturing floor, and they needed manuals written that explained how the computer programming fit with the manufacturing jobs that needed to be done. And if I could write it by understanding it, anyone would be able to know that. She kind of said that, and I said, that is the weirdest compliment, but you know what? Okay, I'll do that. And I did, and I did, somehow. But I have to admit, it really was an effort that came through me. If you, if you asked me anything about that time, I wouldn't be able to tell you anything. In fact, they, they made this big deal about my signing all this secrecy and uh, confidentiality papers, and, and then they stuck me in a gray, flanneled, cubicle about this big in a gray wall about this big and they said wait do it I, I, that doesn't work for me i mean i couldn't have any pictures i couldn't have a flower i was in a cubicle wall there was no air in there so i remember the turning point of of my relationship there that in order to get this project done i took my pad and paper and pen and a lemonade and I went out onto the grounds of Westinghouse and I sat under a tree and I started writing the project. Well, within 20 minutes while I was there, all these bells and whistles went off. Security was going crazy. They couldn't find me and they thought I was, you know, I don't know what they thought. I don't even look like Tom Cruise. But anyway, <laughs> there it was. So they agreed, you know what? Why don't you work from home? So I don't know if you're getting the picture of an entrepreneurial profile here. You know, I just 
march to my own beat. I serve. I look for the open space in the marketplace to find ways of serving people in a new and different way. And, and, and that's my history. So let me catch you up with how I got from that point, because as you can imagine, our then best friends are no longer. The franchises did not follow the quality control measures and processes that we had insisted on. And so literally, we sold our store to our partners. We packed up everything that we owned in two U-Haul trucks. Our children were nine and six at that time. Our Persian cat made it. The goldfish didn't get past Tennessee. And we arrived in Tempe, where Cookies from Home opened on Halloween Day in 1981. Okay. Now, this is when that horse and buggy whip, that technology piece that uh, initially came into our life in 1982, we bought, let me make sure I get it right, we bought an IBM XT. Do you know what that is? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? $8,000. <laughs> Now, can you imagine I'm selling cookies at 49 cents, 52 cents a piece, $8,000 is a whole, whole lot of cookies. And we bought it before we really knew what to do with it. And I love the smiles on your faces because you know, you know where I'm going with this. I mean, that's my whole story. That's why it's just so amazing that I'm here with you today because I, I I guess I could be one of your customers at some point because I'm sure that you are already working on things that scare the hell out of me. Like I'm sure that someone in here is already working on what's going, con what's going to connect my brain cell to a computer chip so that technology will literally be able to read my mind. And that's a scary thought. I am sure that when I think about all of the things that we have come through and what is ahead of us, someone in here is already working on those things. The future is yours. I'm just trying to catch up. So what my story to you today is really the legend of an entrepreneur who started a business when technology didn't exist how we managed to grow a multi-million dollar company over a 30-year period in spite of technology. Because you see, I was resistant. I liked that horse and buggy. I liked, I had so much to do to keep up with my company's growth. It was happening so fast because for the first 10 years, and I, I will catch you up on the technology pieces that came in. For those first 10 years, we were in a position at Cookies from Home where the entire marketplace, all mine, there was nobody doing anything like what I was doing. There was no one serving the way we were serving. And the idea of making a living by selling chocolate chip cookies was unheard of. It was just starting to happen. So for 10 years, keeping up with that glory, keeping up with the volume of growth, because every cookie was made fresh that day, and every cookie really followed family recipes. But you can imagine how technology could have and should have helped me. That XT, whatever it is, IBM XT, what we knew it could do was create production reports. Yay. Our typewriter, do you know what a typewriter is? <laughs> okay, okay. So, you know, we were able to do that. Eventually, we started thinking, when I say eventually, it was like in, your, in our face. Oh, we need a database. Oh, we have customers we want to be in touch with. Oh, we want to be. So, again, just get the picture of a dinosaur standing in the middle of a world that was changing. And with all that we needed to do to manage and control that growth, Technology was just another thing on the list. But I knew in my gut, which is where entrepreneurs live, 
I knew there was power there. Complete power. Scared me. Absolutely terrified me. Because entrepreneurs, or speaking for myself, we can usually have enough of a vision to see maybe a year out. We've got the big picture over here, but anything beyond a year gets too cloudy because there's so many possibilities for growth. Which, which road are we going to choose? Imagine that, that wonderful position to be in. We're growing. How do you want to grow? Well, let's do frozen dough. How do you want to grow? Well, let's do cookie carts. Let's... Innovation is where the entrepreneur lives and breathes. And how that happens? In present time. Present time. So technology was now starting to move in. But as I said, it, I considered it to be an intruder. And I might add that just like that buzz that creates when that first Model T hit a community and people were going to say, well, you know, what about the horse and buggy? But they're in this model, you can get there faster. You can get there, you know, uh, where people can sit with and all of those things that the Model T offered. Technology promised its things too. One is that it was going to save us time. It was going to give us time. It was going to give us leisure time. The second thing is that it was going to create a paperless society. So those were the promises that technology offered, but I haven't seen that actually happen yet. Okay, 1990. We're in business about nine years. We're at about right at that threshold of $2 million in sales, and the dot-com explosion hits. Okay? This happened where all of the, because you see, it was a whole new frontier. You know, we may have had our registrations, our trademarks, our policies and procedures, but technology changed all that, changed the world. So here comes all this this dot-com explosion, and what that meant is that you can buy up all these domain names for nothing and then sell them tomorrow for a lot of money. We knew to get our cookies.com, that's, that's what we had gotten on that day, but we got busy, real busy, and technology for a little while kind of hovered in the background. So when the renewal notice came back across our desk, we missed it. We didn't renew cookies.com. Slipped right by us. And you're saying, yeah, got it. Can you imagine what kind of a boom that would be to our business? All right. Point one for technology, zero for the home team. Okay. So entrepreneurs, of course, need to be resilient and flexible and adaptable and all of these wonderful things. And here I am in denial, resisting and rejecting. And the reason I bear my soul like this to you today is because that's really why I'm here. Because if you're here learning and you know you're here to serve the future, you have to have the attitude of openness, receptivity, flexibility, and an absolute commitment to stay at the edge. And I'm here to tell you what it cost me by not doing that. I was successful in spite of that. However, imagine, imagine the possibilities. Okay, the next milestone is Rob. In our 30 years at Cookies From Home, we sold the company two years ago, and I'll tell you about that. Um, we've hired more than 3,000 people that have come through our company. In fact, as Jackie picked me up, she mentioned that her grandmother, maybe 20 years ago, while she was going to culinary school, was actually on one of our production teams. Out of those 3,000 people, I would say there were maybe 10, maybe 12, that really moved our company forward. And Rob was one of those people. Rob was, I think, in a series of maybe four other IT guys. And I say guys because <coughs> they were all guys. They weren't women that applied for that position because I would have hired them. Our, our staff was 